that it has the analytical solutions. And this part is the A and B matrix, right? And this part is invariant to the state, which means that this A matrix is constant when you, uh, when you set that the swing time. So this is a linear time invariant system, which is super good system because now you can easily analyze, anal easily apply the whatever control theory you know. And I, here I, I introduced two variable, uncertainty variable, oh, by the way, X is a state, center of mass state, position and velocity. P is the control input, but here is the uh, landing location. So stands put position. And this P is computed by the state. So if your center of mass is away from the stance foot, then you need to take a, you know, larger steps. If it, the velocity is high, then you need to take a larger step. Opposite case, you need to take a you know, small step. That's pretty much this equation means. And I apply these two variables. This is uncertain variable. And I bound these two variables with a, some certain number and then the try to find that the, when X is a stable, even though there is some uncertain region. If the, there is no constraint whatsoever or what, uncertainty whatsoever, then entire state space are stable. Here is the X position. This is Y, I mean, vertical axis is X uh, velocity, so position and velocity. Whatever initial state is going to be converged to the you know, zero velocity state, which means that central mass is going to stop by continuously taking the steps. But you cannot make that you know, large enough step, step if your state is here because your kinematics, robot kinematics is limited. So this is the robot kinematics this gray area. So you cannot take a larger than this step. It's around 0 0.35 or four uh, meter, so 40 centimeter. The state can be cobbled given this kinematics, error, uh, kinematics limit is this blue region. So as long as the state is inside of the blue state, blue regions, then by taking a steps, it can converge to the origin. So far so good, right? And then check that the, what is the uncertain regions. If I have a four centimeter error in the state estimation, I mean, yeah, um, four centimeter error in the landing location and a three centimeter error in the state estimation. So if I can, if I estimate the center of mass position, uh, three centimeter in, incorrectly. And then the, if the landing location is away from the commanded point by four centimeter, then this is uncertain region, this uh, orange uh, circle, which means that outside of this orange circle is uh, every state is a stable, asymptotically stable. But inside of the state, state inside of this orange circle is uncertain. You cannot guarantee the stability. And you see this ball is actually larger than blue region, which means that kinematically feasible states are all uncertain. You cannot guarantee the stability. Okay, then how much accuracy I need to uh, have to make sure that, that this uncertain region is well bounded in the, the feasible state. 1.5 centimeter error in the landing location, two millimeter error, in the estimation. So amazingly high accuracy is required. So think about this robot is the 1.5 meter, uh, 1.3 meter height, and the leg length is almost meter if it is fully straight. 1.5 centimeter means that, how light, the angle 0.01 radian error in the hip joint can, you know, 
can make your robot is unstable. So I coming back to that uh, formulation because I know I have a larger than this, I, I have a larger error than this criteria. So this is the pre previous firstly uh, proposed control architecture. I change this by adding the one more layer uh, which is kinematic level whole body control. Because torque command based whole body control really good at the impedance control, low stiffness control, but uh, it is a hard to compete against the kinematic space, the whole body, kinematic space, the controller, which actually holding your actuator in terms of the stiffness and accuracy. So I find the joint, joint position, not only you know, landing location. I also calculate the, what is the, uh, what is the joint positions according to that the given uh, foot position and then do that the position control and completely take off the torque controller and highly rely on the joint position controller, which is you know, collocated. Collocated means that your feedback loop is right near to that uh, your control point, I mean, your actuation point. So it's always easier to control motor than, you know, some, some other part, some, some things away from the motor. And then they connect, if they connected through the drivetrain, then, you know, you can see that the dynamics you must see that you must handle the dynamics between the actuator and the control point. If it is right near to the actuator, it's a lot easier to control. Collocation means that I'm going to control the motor instead of the foot. And um, hardware upgrade. And now I know that the hardware is not good enough to accomplish this one centimeter error because this part is the weakest part of this robot actually bends more than a few centimeter. So if I hold this part and then push the leg with my hands, then actually you can deflect the foot more than five centimeter. Which means that even though your controller is a perfect, you still have the, the possibility to get more than the four centimeter error. So I reinforce that the strength. I replace the IMU uh, to enhance that uh, central mass state estimation. I change the older electronics and the context switch. So this is the hardware upgrade. And this is final result. Literally, we got, I got this result even after I graduate, after I finished the PhD. And when we get the, when I get this result, my advisor and I literally almost cry. The controller, the lesson I have learned in this uh, project, controller must be based on the real system. So even though you have a perfect torque controller, if you don't want to have a, you know, low stiffness control, impedance control, you must not use that torque control, but Joint position control is much better. And the importance of the architecturing and the patience for the perfection, even though I didn't explain the, all of the details, there are small details you must you know, handle, like a feet friction. I put the rubber under the foot and it actually helps a lot. And then you cannot write this. Uh, it's a, not academically really valuable component, but it, it is critical. It is small details are super critical. So you must live in the physical world because you cannot, you cannot catch the, this, you know, small details in simulation. And this is a more fun video. Uh, excited to uh, bother the robot. Uh, here is my advisor. Yeah. He really excited to throw the ball. See, yeah. And this is the 
a rock terrain locomotion experiment. Uh, it looks not very impressive in terms of the height variation. Uh, this pad is uh, sliding each other. So sometimes Lobo make a slip or stuck at the edge of the pad. Uh, it is robust enough to handle the, this type of the uh, disturbance. You see that the, you know, it's stuck in the recover. And <clears throat> this is another uh, result. I deploy this system, uh, this controller to the other system, which is has the 10 degree of freedom. Very different from the my original bipedal system, but uh, I accomplished uh, this same locomotion capability in a week by tuning by small tuning and uh, some other modification, but uh, it's quite fast uh, progress. And I mean, I originally designed this controller to be used in the humanoid, but humanoid is too expensive. So I tested it in the simulation. And you can see that same controller can stabilize the every, you know, many different type of the robot. Kind of obvious result once you use the whole body control. Okay, that's PhD work. Let's move on. This is mini Chira uh, called feed running. So whole body control, I strongly believe in it. Uh, whole body control is a nice controller, but I also truly understand what is the limitation of the whole body control. Whole body control only see the one single control tick, which means that uh, it can only see that the milliseconds future which means that it doesn't know that it's a walking or jumping or running. It just control this, you know, small, small history, small future. <clears throat> That's all the whole body control can see. But think about that it's in the air. It's, you think about the, you're running and the, you understand that you're in the running. That means that even though you are in the air, you know that there is the upcoming landing. So to do that, we need some controller who understand that this entire sequence of motion. And the MPC can do that. MPC is a model predictive control. Uh, it's nothing but trajectory optimization controller, but iteratively solving this uh, trajectory optimization. So in real time, we solve the entire trajectory now find the optimal trajectory of the walking. After a few milliseconds, it solved this trajectory optimization again, and again, and again. So it's a feedback control, but a lot slower than the whole body control, but much better in terms of this, you know, time horizons, expectation window, the walk control window. But because of it, MPC uh, is computationally expensive and you cannot use the, the complex model in general. And that's the slow update frequency is of course, because it's expensive, com computationally expensive. So I tried to mix these two. Again, there are multiple ways to mix these two. Uh, one way, and this is most the general way to integrate the whole body control and the model predictive control you find the optimal trajectory from the MPC and then let the whole body control follow that uh, trajectory. Can be body position trajectory, can be body orientation trajectory, but anyway, it can, you can force the whole body control tracking that comment, optimize the trajectory. By the way, before I move on, are you okay with it, the MPC formulation? You're, you know, trajectory optimization, you can simply understand this as that, you know, real time trajectory optimization. Good. Okay. Uh, but uh, see that the time timing uh, variable on the, of the miniature running. Contact period is 0 0.09 seconds. So it stay on the ground 90 milliseconds. And the area is uh, 60 milliseconds. And the trajectory tracking can be done 
I mean, you can control the robots only, only when it's the contact with the ground. And uh, because I said it, whole body control need a contact point, right? If you don't have a contact point, then there is no way to control your floating base. But almost half of your, half of this robot running is actually about the aerial pace. The robot is to stay in the air, significant portion of the, this entire, um, entire motion sequence. So I decided to push the ground instead of the following the desire the trajectory. And then keep that uh, posture as much as possible. I mean, keep the, the whole body posture stable as long as they push the ground as MPC found. So MPC calculate the reaction force profile. I'm going to focus on the reaction force profile instead of the central mass trajectory or body trajectory. So I say it's the whole body impulse control. It's always nice to make the new name. It feels like you are doing something new. Always very similar to the previous one. Okay, so now I replace the planner with a model predictive control. I don't need the, the stepping step planner anymore. It's not by PD system, but I have a better one, which is model predictive control. And I put it in the, on top of the whole body control. The one thing's kind of unique of this control architecture is this one, reaction force. Mm, because any other peoples, so anyone else, everyone else in the world doesn't much care about the, the reaction force when they use the whole body control. I think it's a natural philosophy because as I said before, whole body control find the reaction force to control the floating base. So <clears throat> whole body control itself calculating the reaction force. That means that this is kind of the overlap, uh, you know, duplicated work. Do you see what I mean? So whole body control will find the reaction force, but the reaction force command coming from the model fluid control. But that's how we got the running in this uh, in this uh, work. Um, Enhance the robustness a lot. So you see that uh, why, by adding the whole body control, it actually uh, maintains the balance a lot better. And this is the MPC only walking uh, experiment. It's not bad at all. It's actually compatible to the state, as, uh, state of work. But once I speed up uh, and it failed to maintain the balance. This is the maximum speed. You can see once you integrate these two controller, the 3.7 meter per second, almost you know, fastest running in the world in this size of robot. And then we can make it this robot running faster than this a little more than that, but we actually hit the joint torque and torque limit and the motor power limit. So given hardware, this controller actually present, uh, made at the maximum speed it can do. And I uh, try to check, I wanna know that the, this is a really general. Can I use it for biped and Yes, it, you can use the same controller for a bipede device, just changing the, the, the model part. They can walk, it can run. Of course, it's not, you know, walking like you. It's not walk, you know, running like the humans yet, but uh, this is the preliminary result to, to check the, the feasibility of the, this controller. And it's working, it's quite encouraging. Okay, I forgot to show that the failure, I, you know, subtitle is a failure. So this is the rear experiment. And that's the, the correct one. This is the how, this is the, the, you know, what we've seen until we get that lizard. Uh, 
Uh, the video is okay. Is it choppy? Little bit, little bit. <laughs> Everyone, you can see that the, that final failure mode, right? It's just so. How can I say? Mm, painful to see, isn't it? Yeah, what a pity. So it has a uh, this long failure video. Uh, yeah, let me skip. Just almost. Uh, it's so painful to see that. What a small robot. And the last one is a vision aided rob train. What time is now? We don't. We have enough time. Okay. Uh, so far. Well, I the what I showed is about uh, blind walking. So you never see the terrain. The reason why it's uh, it maintain the balance even though there is a disturbance is because it know how to control its own body, even without watching the anything. It assume that the terrain is a flat. But if you want to extend this uh, capability to even even further, then you need to see the terrain, understand the, how much how how things going on outside, and then account that kind of the change and the variation in the locomotion control. And I did uh, two vision sensor. One is for localization. Must know the where the robot must know the where the where their body is in a global frame, not relative to that uh, your foot, the foot. And depth camera is will see that the height of the terrain. And this new layer is added on top of the whole body control and input, uh, MPC. So this is new uh, layer for this control architecture. There are there are many work, existing work, to build that this height map and using the, the depth camera in a in a local uh, locomotion control, but. Our purpose is a still dynamic locomotion and agile robot. So we approaching this problem in a, a little different than others. They try to, to make the European system perfect. So a crate and then you know details, but for us the speed is matter. So we sparse the sampling. So we take we use only one out of thousand point and then simplify the algorithms. And then use that uh, efficient and simple filter. Gradient based uh, terrain categorization means that uh, one after you after we build at the height map, we categorize the terrain as the steppable or not steppable by checking the gradient, which is also really fast. And then finally, we got the uh, update frequency ninety, and this ninety is a hardware update frequency, which means that. All this height map generation and filtering is done in a couple of milliseconds. So that's why I can see this moving ob object in the height. So you can see this, the bump is updating in real time. And this is a final result here. Uh, Minichira are changing the landing location based on the height map. And you see that what happens inside of the Minichira brain here. You will see that the green part and the blue part. Green is the steppable, blue is not steppable because it's the edge of the terrain. And once you meet uh, some high obstacle which cannot be walk over, then it made a jump. And it's not autonomous. I actually turn and off, you know, trigger that jump. Uh, in the future, in the near future, we'll make a we'll, we'll add a more autonomy here. And see that even though I randomly, you know, deploy that this wooden block, and it can go forward, which is the commanded, uh, commanded velocity going forward is commanded path. It can also has the basic uh, obstacle avoidance algorithm. Okay. 
And now it's the sensors and the computer are all integrated in the body. So we can run this uh, demo without tethering the anything. So in the previous experiment, I put the, you know, I must connect the robot with a, uh, with a desktop through the you know, cable. But the upgraded the Minichira Visions has the GX, uh, NVIDIA graphic card uh, computer inside of the body. And then the, all the sensors are also integrated in the body. So we don't need cable anymore. And this is the stair climbing simulations. And I will show, it show that uh, now we can go anywhere in our uh, building, although we haven't tried in the real robot, but yes, it's a, it's a coming. So vision based controller uh, is, a, is, we are making the progress in the vision, pro, uh, vision based working controller. Oh, again, uh, so failure. Oh, sorry, before I talk about the failure, I must explain also this one. Uh, Many people in our lab uh, make a great progress in the pest planning as well. So this is the A-star pest planning, one of the simplest uh, pest planning algorithms. But we run this A-star pest planning in real time, continuously updating that uh, the pest can avoid this obstacle, which never seen before. So in this experiment, we don't have the global map, but it, it change the path instantaneously whenever it faced the new obstacle. So a little more autonomy. And this is the failure we, I got. Okay, so a lot more serious than just walking. And this is the, this can happen sometimes because we don't check that the uh, obstacle. They can stuck under the wood, wood block. And this is simply bulk. I mean, another weird, one other most annoying and important thing is that reducing the number of the bug in your program. Because it has slow down the, a lot, slow down a lot your progress. So this is just a simple bug. And That's pretty much what I prepared today. Okay, let me summarize the what I talks. It's a kind of the here and there a little, but you know, I keep uh, trying to validate everything in a real robot. And while doing that, uh, we must keep thinking that I must keep thinking that uh, is this system is it based on the systemic reasoning? Is it this control architecture in accounting the every detail? And then these details, spectri uh, the spectrum is really wide. It starts from the actuator, the hardware, and the joint controller, and the motion planner, even visions, must be understood in a single stream, but hierarchical way. And another important thing I want to say is that since can happen, is that this kind of thing. You, sometimes you stay all night up while doing something, but not important thing. And the worst thing is that you don't even know this important or not while you are doing it. It's eventually you will uh, you will figure out the, what is important or not. But while you are doing it, it's really hard to estimate that this actually helps your progress or actually deteriorates progress. So my experience about the torque control, I spent almost a year, actually more than a year to make the torque feedback control becomes better. And I don't even use it in the final, final experiments. But that's the, that always happens. You will learn some things. And then that, that is good things. Study hard to something unrelated to your topic. Again, torque control, feedback, torque control, whatever. I don't use it anymore. And mini cheetah, it even doesn't have a torque sensor. And it's uh, almost the best torque controller I ever used. But because I know it's hard to accomplish the torque feedback control, now at least I can avoid it, right? I can say that you must not use it because I tried it and it doesn't work. So again, it will, you will learn something and there is 
it's eventually helpful for you. All effort will be paid by your solid knowledge and intuition and paper. Then, then the, the reason why I put the paper is that even though you made a mistake, even though you made the, any something you know, unrelated to the, your you know, final goals, must be, everything must be documented. And the best docu document is papers. It's a rewarding and it's solid. And then it's reviewed by your peers. You will get a lot of good feedback. So always document if you made any, anything bad, even though you are thinking it's bad. Okay, uh, this is all. Let me stop sharing. I can see that. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Te technical, not technical. Anybody? Science fiction question, fine. Uh, this is just a clarification. Uh, you mentioned before how most people don't uh, take account of reaction force. Um, can you explain that again? I didn't quite understand like what was different about the mini cheetah's control in that respect. You mean the MPC and the whole body control part? Yeah, yeah, that, that slide, yep. Yeah, so <clears throat> in the whole body control community, whole body control is the basically the function to accomplish the desired trajectory. And here the trajectory means the body position trajectory uh, by calculating, by pushing the ground, by getting, by calculating the reaction force. So once you understand this uh, mentality, the philosophy, then uh, you will feel the, some weirdness if you give the reaction force command to the whole body control, because that's not input for whole body control. That's the output of the whole body control. You see that this weirdness, you can see that why people believe that it's a strange. So uh, why is it important as an input, I guess? And uh, in here? Yeah, why, why, why use it as input when everyone just doesn't? It's because uh, if you're in the air, if your standing period is only 90 seconds, 90 milliseconds, then it's kind of useless to track the central mass trajectory. You are running, while you're running, you don't think about the where my foot body height is, right? You're just uh, focusing on that, uh, pushing the ground the right moment with the right amount to make the jump. And then when you rent, you don't control the leg length, right? Exactly. So now it's a uh, few millimeter out of the my tra to plan the trajectory. We must push a little bit to make sure that this trajectory is nicely tracked by the planned part. No, you can actually go away from the planned trajectory more than centimeter. As long as you are pushing the ground in a right amount, again, okay, right amount, right direction. And that right amount and right direction is computed in the model fluid control. And then you must use this output in somehow in the whole body control. So I made it the whole body control is the main role become a, be a, the secondary role. Main role of the whole body control is to stabilize the posture and track the desired the trajectory. But I put it in the second role and then the first priority of the whole body control in here is a following that, that command is a reaction, reaction force. And as long as following the reaction force with a reasonable accuracy, it tries to stabilize the body posture. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you think that the reason that the community uh, does not have this relevant revelation is because that they're moving too slowly. So then reaction forces are not, it's like, it's like mostly quasi-static. It's not that 
important because they're not jumping around and all that. Yeah, that's the uh, first the reasons, and I think that's the biggest reasons. Uh, but it's not that simple because many people actually understand that this difficulty. I mean, these problems. Uh, I think another biggest reason is the hardware. And there are not many robots can actually run and jump. So even though you come up with this similar idea, there is no way to test it. Makes sense. Thank you. Another question. So you mentioned that when you like use the MPC, you lose like the or the step planner that you had in the previous robot. Do you think there needs to be like it's necessary to have a another module that plans like a few footholds like in advance, not just like the next one? Yeah, great, uh, great suggestion. Yeah, I think so. So the reason why I replace it. Uh, it's because MPC actually do that the, something the previous planner did, but that doesn't mean that we need to replace the planner without the MPC. As you say, the MPC also weighting the better implication. So MPC, if the there is other component which is devoted to find the best landing location, and then that result can be fit into the MPC, then Opponents must be a lot better than now. So you're correct. I agree. That's all this thing. I have a question. Okay. It seems like everyone is in the lab. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, can you hear? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So, um, in your you mentioned that uh, for your PhD, you first used. Uh, torque control and you uh, ended up using joint control. Mm -hmm. So in this slide here, uh, where the this current slide, no, no, uh, it's uh, you're on the right slide already. Okay. Uh, would that be analogous to not having joint fin? Uh, for example, in the joint level control, mm -hmm. is it? Um, Having just the torque controller, is it analogous to having no joint PD control in this joint level control? Okay, let me see what is that. Uh, joint level control actually taking the torque from the whole body impulse control, also get the joint position and velocity from the whole body impulse control. So it's just still using that. It actually same as the previous whole body control, but uh, we did uh, this small addition, reaction force command. Okay, so, so then the yeah, I see. Position, velocity and torque. Okay, so it, this joint level controller, it does it does both PD control and torque control. Am I right? Or uh, the so, Oh no, the torque control is in feed forward only. So it's just. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good catch. Uh, the. Even I say that uh, I didn't use the joint uh, joint torque feedback control, that doesn't mean that I'm not using the torque command. Uh, I take off the feedback part. So I still sending the feed forward input, but uh, I'm not watching that uh, sensor signal from the torque sensor anymore. Okay, yeah, that's, that's much clearer. Thank you. Yes. I'm kind of curious about something too. Um, so you mentioned that it might be helpful to study things unrelated to your field. Do you have any suggestions for what other topics that's unrelated to more traditional robotics could be could lead to interesting insights, like okay. neuroscience or that kind of thing? Pretty good point. Uh, I didn't tend it to say in that way. Uh, it doesn't mean that you need to study the unrelated work. What I want to say is that sometimes you study the unrelated work while you don't even, you know, you don't even recognize that it's unrelated. You try to always, you must always try to, to under, try to study the related work. 
that doesn't mean that uh, all your study is going to be end up with a, you know, this single solid goal. Because, you know, goal is here, you are here, and <laughs> you are stacking that the layers to reach the goal. And then, you know, if you stack the layer here, then it doesn't help. But you don't know that this layer is actually helpful for the here or not. So sometimes you are studying the unrelated work really hard. And then uh, it's actually better to minimize that kind of things. I mean, yeah, that's my opinion. So if I know that the solution, then I, I can always, you know, make this narrow path to reach to the, the fastest and the rapid solid way to reach to the goal. But usually you don't know where it is. And the reason why you, it's better to have a wide spectrum is always better. It's because uh, your goal is not always a single one, right? You, the next goal may be here. So it helps to accomplish that the next goal. And then you actually has the much better intuition and understanding once you get the new problems because you have a wide spectrum. The under your understanding is wide. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. It's actually most most dangerous if you only know one type of work because you're you're very biased in every aspect, philosophy wise, your mathematics skill wise, and everything is biased. You're gonna you're gonna take it as a gospel, even though actually, you know, many different field and different philosophy and different approach. Yeah, yeah. At this point, I want to steal the your statement, Tangbe's statement. If you do not confuse, then you do not run anything. So you must be confused while you are studying. Yeah, learning is about taking something confused and then make it understandable. <clears throat> Anything else? Any undergrad? <laughs> Question, I guess Daniel's on the right, but our left. <laughs> All right, uh, we can, you can always ask questions to Slack channel. This Wednesday, we're going to have a couple of very special guests. This Wednesday, we're going to have a doctor from Children's Hospital. And we're going to talk about lung mechanics. This is going to be a very special lecture. You're not going to be able to hear this kind of lecture anywhere else. So uh, please come uh, next uh, this Wednesday. And apparently, it's a lot of mechanical engineering. You know, you will realize a lot of problems in our body is actually mechanical. Well, that's not exceptional in in cars and computers and most things that fail is actually mechanical and. Lung is a very, very mechanical system. There's actually, uh, there's a lot of, you know, gas change and everything, but those are all mechanical. So uh, very uh, interesting to hear. So see you on Wednesday and keep it up, keep up uh, good work for the project. So see you later, see you on Wednesday. Bye everyone. Thank you.